We can garden in late winter. We're going to discuss boxwoods today. We're going to have cloud pruning. The David Cook, who is with the UT Extension Office in Davidson County, is an expert on that. And David is going to walk us through this process and tell us why he prefers that for our boxwoods. David? Okay, well, it's a pleasure to be with Volunteer Gardener, and what a pretty day we picked out to do this. Uh, this is a good example. I'm not familiar with the, uh, the exact uh, cultivar or it's it's a it's a boxwood yes and so all the different type of boxwoods uh, can have the same growth habit so what we want to do uh, you can see a lot of this growth has come out and it looks a little unkept right now this boxwood in, in the past has probably been sheared so we get a lot of extensive growth what we'd like to do is uh, create a, a, a situation where we, we start thinning out some little branches on this and you can feel the wind blowing today. So the wind is, is going right over the top of this boxwood. We want to slow the wind down so it can penetrate in there. So the main especially reason for summertime. That, yes, the main reason for that is to allow airflow inside and dry out the foliage because these are very susceptible to different fungal diseases. Yes. And I noticed earlier, I found an area inside this one that we need to pay attention to on that. So we're going to do some cultural pruning techniques to lessen the, the presence of a disease outbreak. It won't stop it completely, but it'll, it'll, it will make the plant healthier. Okay, well let's, shall we say, okay. dive in. Okay, see this sticking up right here? If we grab this like that, and, and I pull it back and look, I say, well, okay, it's coming out right down in here. So I'm just, gonna, I wanna cut that out. And, and some people go, oh no. He's, people, when you teach them this, they hesitate. I don't want to, you're not going to hurt it. Boxes won't scream out. But now, if we brush this back to make a cut, it's Voila. hard to tell where I made the cut, isn't it? Absolutely. So what we want to do is go in again. And so here's another one. We grab this one right here. Let me ask you this. Do, do you do this section by section or you step back or do you routinely go around? Okay, first thing I do is generally I stand back and look at the overall appearance of, of the shrub. Picture. Then I just take a little area uh, a circle about a two foot square circle say let's do that then the stuff that's really growing out spindly i thought well that's, i could trace that back you pull that back and here's what i want to find right there now you look at all this growth that's trying to come out it it could use a little more sunlight yeah and so we're just going to take that back and don't be picky about where you cut it cut that out yeah then i could take a, another one up here something tall like this snip it out then we want to brush it up again and uh slowly yeah it fills in it, it's, it's you think what we find on the ground when i'm through with one of these people said well, there's more plant material on the ground than it's left and I said well that's going to be a, a healthy uh box of it. so take another one here this is growing up spindly so we're just going to whack it now what i don't want to do is start doing this yes trimming this is just uh this is not even thinning. This is just called heading back. Haircut. And you know what happens when you do that to a shrub? More growth. So yes. you create more growth than you had. So what we want to do is uh, do some more like, here's another one. Yes. We're going to pull this back and just whack it. And there's another one here. And let's see, we'll cut that one about right there. Yeah. And after a while, you're going to get a pile here and, and then your neighbors just think, you're butchering that. You're, no, yeah. you're not, you're doing the right thing. And you know, in this process, I'm seeing that you're eliminating some of this bronzing that's yeah, happened so here during the winter. Very common, probably this year, we people are gonna see more bronzing. It's a physiological disorder, not a disease. And in the spring, it's gonna outgrow this. Yes. Some people might wanna apply a little bit of nitrogen, but let mother nature take its course. She'll green these up. So we're gonna take a few more of these out Yes. And uh, again, this is removing. And what I can do is brush it up every time you do it and stand back. So let me do a few more real quick. And then we'll take these uh, head shears over there. And we'll do some uh, what we call clouding. So we want a kind of a little hill and okay. a valley around here. So real quick on some of these. You know, this is pretty pretty fast process. We Don't be picky about it. You know what? You're not going to hurt the shrub. No. It's like, you know, even a bad haircut will grow <laughs> yeah. out. Okay. Hopefully it'll grow out. 
Okay, so we'll take a few more off here. Okay. Now, what yes, I'll I do can here. See the results. Now, see the green color in? I and do. you mentioned we're getting rid of that bronzing. Yeah. So that's something uh, people don't like. So now we're going to take these. And what I'm going to do, I am going to trim off a little. I don't want to create a meatball. I just want to allow an area so air can slow down when it comes around here. So you do use both. I Prunes. use both both type pruning tools. Yes. All right, and I see the thinning process that you did. And it gives the, this boxwood a more natural kind of growth habit. Uh, an unnatural growth habit is when you shear them. Yeah. And you know what that does? It all those uh, dormant buds just pop out. Right. And I can imagine this as we would go all the way around. And I see that. And and whether or not it's billowing or going in, yeah. it still it looks lifted. Is the word I want to use. Yeah. So it's uh, it'll air will get in here. Now the sunlight can get in here too. Mm -hmm. Now, but if we look into an area where the sunlight never got, okay, I let's saw see there's an issue here with this oh, box. I, yes. Look at that brown. I now, that's see not that. a healthy look, is it? No, it's not. Well, there is a lot of dead foliage that just falls and gets trapped in all these twigs. Now, you can actually find the ones that are dead and snap them off with your fingers. Do now, you think that's necessary? Like, well, these, in this case, I would because this one has a little outbreak of what we call the Viatella canker disease. Yes. Now, these little black they won't be able to pick this up. So those little black spots? Yes, I did. That's a secondary weak pathogen called macrophoma. That comes in later after the leaves have died. Yeah. And so it's, uh, it's a little fungal organism that's taken a little bit of nutrients out of the dead tissue. That didn't cause the, the death of these leaves. The Viatella did. And the Viatella, once you get your eye trained and know what to look for, there are pink colored pustules on the leaves. Those are spores. And so. If this is wet inside here, now you have the right host plant, and you have the right disease spores, all you need is too much moisture, boom, disease. Here comes summer, And yes. if it's aggressive, we're gonna call it a blight. Yeah. So we'll go in here, and you could with your hands just, see these leaves are, there's a lot in here, look at all that. Oh, I did see that. See? Now and if I can snap it off, it's dead. Yes. So what we wanna do is, it's not a bad practice to come in, and maybe with your hands, just knock a lot of this off too. Anything that is large and dead, this is dead. I'm just gonna cut that off. It was very brittle. So you really think that the demise of these leaves was from that virus, not from no sunlight? Yeah, yeah, That's a, it's a fungal pathogen and it's very pretty specific to boxwoods. Gotcha. Okay. I get a lot of calls as an extension agent that okay. people call it a blight. Now there is a disease called uh, box of blight, but that's something else. Yeah, and you know, every garden is graced, I think, with a boxwood of some sort. They're just beautiful plants. Yes, and learning a new technique, whether they're standing out or if it's a, uh, a hedge along the walkway, we do need to know how to take care of those plants because they live forever. Yeah. unless they do have something that yeah. gets So attacked. every plant has, has a little bit of a maintenance. Right. And so as that's long part as of being a gardener. We need to educate ourselves, and I thank you that this beautiful day came along. See, I love this. I'm out of the house. I'm not in my office. I'm not at a computer. I'm outside in the natural world. And this Nashville Cemetery is right in the middle of busy downtown, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, how many trains have we seen going I by know. and trucks? Well, and thank you that you've taken your day and taught us some things. And that's... Yes. Look to the clouds and see the That's result. Right. Of, That's your awesome. inspiration. Look up sometimes and yes. mimic what Mother Nature provides. It's a template up there. Thank you. Thank you. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.